Alright, so last time, I showed you how to set up your web API for your local database. Today, I will be showing you how to set up your web API for your Azure database. This will also be assuming that you have already created your Azure database, have put it uh, in any data, and also verified that you can connect to it. Maybe with, by verifying that you connect to it via um, SQL Server Management Studio. So let's jump right into it. So the first things first, we're going to be creating a ASP.NET Core Web App. The, not Web App, sorry, Web API. Very important, Web API, not Web App. I'm just going to choose a, choose a location file. I'm just going to call mine Demo. Obviously, like in the previous video, you, you do not name it Demo. You, didn't, you name it something more applicable. Uh, also, if you do not have these options, also refer to the other video where I show you how to install .NET Core 3.1. I'll just pause while it's creating. And we're back. All right. So, uh, as yet again, as an old video, I'm just going to remove the default files. So we're going to be removing weatherforecast.cs. We're going to be also going to controllers and removing weather forecast controller. While we are in here, we will also be creating our local or testing our connection to our database so we can later get our connection string. So I'm just going to go back here and like previous the previous video, this is going to be like a lot like the other video. So it's going to use U, UDL, UDL is the extension type. Yes, I want to save, I want to open the file and then you will have to copy your server name or, or address. Ooh. Mine is just lab, give it a moment, please. All right, you just want to paste in your server name. Then you want to change it to specified user name and password. I've mine saved here on a separate document, so I can just paste it in here. This will not be my final database. I will probably be removing it afterwards. Also, uh, warning to anyone creating multiple databases like me uh, like I did myself you need to be very very careful about the databases you're choosing to host and you need to set them up correctly or you'll get charged a lot and in like my case that happened to me so that is unfortunate but luckily I caught it while I still have some of my credits left so as you can saw as you can see the test connection is successful all right okay okay yes uh, yes this will ask you check allow saving password so you can get the password in your connection string that is very important for later on this is not this is not very secure so you might want to remove the connection when you are um, posting this to your repository but as for this you want to say allow so it can save the password in the text file and then in here we should be able to see our connection there we go and here we have our connection with my unencrypted password that's why it's not very secure all right, so like the last time, we are going to be installing our NuGet packages, the six of them, the four Microsoft ones, and then our uh, two other ones. I'm just going to go copy the names again. So it's going to be Microsoft Framework, or Microsoft Entity Framework, not insert. I want to uh, browse for it and browse. Found it. All right, so we're just going to be checking uh, these ones. Yet again, we'll be installing the version applicable to the version of .NET Core we are using. So we're using version 3.1.28. That's why we're installing this version. As you can see, OK. Allow. <coughs> Sorry. And then we go. Then off to the next one. Server. All right. So just 3.1. Install. More of the same actually so it's going to be this i i think i might just go just pause this i'll put i'll put in the description and text file to the steps that i'm doing because uh just this is just to save time i just want to capture this part again so for all the microsoft entity framework ones you want to select the version of dotnet core you're using so for all of those i selected 3.1.28 for swashbuckler at microsoft open api you select the newest ones and uh, that's about the important part of this. If you this video, if you feel it's incomplete, just go watch the local database one. It's uh, going to be a lot the same because it's pretty much exactly the same, except we're changing here and there. We're changing our um, 
connection string information. As you can see, I'm still just installing this. So I'm just gonna pull, uh, wait, just gonna cut out the bit where I installed the other the last package. As you can see here on my screen, I currently have my uh, six packages: my Microsoft Entity Framework packages, and then the Open API and ASP.NET Core one. All right, so. After this, we want to check if our tools installed properly. So I'm just going to close this and this for now. Yes, we can save. I don't think that's too much of an issue. .NET Core, and we want to open the package console manager. I think that's one we want to open. All right, after it opened, we're just going to paste in the command to check if it's installed correctly. So we can say .NET EF. Oh, yeah, here we go. Dot dot net sorry dot net ef i just typed it wrong you see okay it's installed correctly because it gave me this output if there's any if there's a like a red output then you know you did something wrong or the package didn't install correctly yet again like last time you can just run this command i'll also be pasting it in i'll leave it in the text file as you can see it's not going to work for me because it's already installed correctly so i don't have any issues all right, so after that, we're going to start scaffolding from our database. So yet again, it's the same command as last time. Actually, wait, before I do this, let me actually just clear out my console paste. Yet again, so it's going to be our .NET Core scaffold, and then E here is our connection string. We're going to get our connection string from our connected connection uh, .udl. Going to copy it from password till the end. So it needs to be password, your persistent stuff, blah 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 blah. And then your source is your server uh, network connection. All right. And then we're just going to paste this in here. Paste, enter, and then it's going to start scaffolding. I'll, I'll, I'll wait to see if it has an error. If it has an error. Oh, it's successful. Okay, so there was no errors this time. Last time I did get an error for the local database. If you get the same error, just go refer to the video. It's more of the, it's more of the same of just uninstall a package reinstall the package, restart your Visual Studio code, just try a, a combination of that to see if it works. If it doesn't work, I might actually link my Discord in this video, so you can just pop in there if you need any help. But if that doesn't work, then it, it's, uh, yeah, stuff. Anyway, so we want to go to your project for now, so project properties, and we want to quickly copy in this part, with this code here. I'll also be leaving this in the text file. It's not the end of the world. It's quite uh, nice to have, but I don't think it's necessary to have this. Then we want to go to your uh, start dot uh, cs, and we want to quickly just import a couple things here. So first of all, we want to say we are using our models. Obviously, yeah. So we're going to see saying using demo dot models. So we can access that, and then we're going to start copying the services. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so we can see. So we're going to services, and we're going to be pasting in this part. And I don't think there's anything we need to change here. No, there doesn't seem to be anything. And then we need to change this part. And then add the second service. And here's the catch. We need to change production DB context to our DB context. So it's going to be DB demo or demo db yeah oh, sorry it's demo db context save it then we go on to the next part we're in the still in the to start up cs we're going to go to app the app section so we're going to see all the app things we're going to have app 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 and then at the bottom here we're just going to implement app use swagger and then app use swagger ui then after this, we're going to go to our app settings here, app settings JSON, and we're going to be adding this part. Behind this allow host and asterisk, you put a comma, paste this in, and we need to go into our connection string again, copy it from here till the end, and let's paste it into our string here, save. This is pretty much the last part where it's going to differ from what we're going to be doing for the rest of the time. So uh, feel free to skip this uh, this part. If you already watched the local database video, this is about the, the, the last thing that's different. I'm just gonna copy the JSON text we're gonna be replacing with. So just copy all of this, delete everything here, paste it back in. 
remember to change this part to your project name. So if you don't know what your project name, just go to start.cs and look at your namespace. Copy that and paste it in here. Save. Then we can just close this, close this, close this, and close this. Save. Uh, close this and we need quickly just going to create our controllers i'm going to create one or two controllers as a demo okay so quickly in here you're not going to be using mvc you're going to be using api selecting the nice one or the, the long one and you're going to be set importing models so let's be using category you're going to be using db context and add and now it's just going to wait for it to create as you can see it finished creating by the file in my controllers i have the new file Important to note, you do not have to create a controller for your context for your context file. So you, you, I, I'm not going to create a, a controller for DB, a demo DB context. I'll only be creating for category, device, and zones. These are the three tables I have in my database. And you'll probably have the three same tables and your three same controllers. I'll just quickly cut out the bit where I create the last three ones. All right, as you can see, I have all three my controllers set up so we should be able just to run it now and have it working as it's connecting to my database we'll see now if i did something wrong hopefully i remember to do everything correctly let's see let's give it some time all right so it's this is currently running locally i will in the next video explain how to publish this api to your azure okay so i'm just going to try it out Okay, and it worked just hunky dory. As you can see, I got returned some data, and that was about it. So, if you have any questions while struggling, uh, please contact me. If you if you know how, if you don't know how, unfortunate. Anyway, cheers, cheers. See you in the next one.